That's a cool picture on my brother's wall of all of our Mustangs back in the day, or muscle car group. Had a friend coming over with a 35th anniversary GT. We're going to work on the window a little bit. I brought the GT over first, and then he had canceled, and then he called back and said he was coming. So then I went and got the blue Mach 1 and brought it over and hung out a little bit. Beautiful looking Mach 1. Looks fantastic this beautiful morning. But yeah, we were going to work on this 35th anniversary GT. The owner has just moved to town from northern Utah, and so I had actually seen pictures of the car on the Northern Utah Mustang Facebook page that I'm on. Even though we're in southern Utah here, um, there aren't really a whole lot of Mustangs down here compared to up north, but anyway, he was going to come over, so I brought the blue Mach 1 over to show him. He said he really wanted to see it, and he wanted to see the other cars that we had and stuff, but basically he had a problem where his rear side window was leaking when he'd go through a car wash or something and so my brother offered to uh, take it apart and look at it and stuff for him so here he comes We started pulling the trim out and I had actually done this on my yellow GT recently because it had all these pieces and trim missing when I bought the car. So we tested it with water and stuff and it was pretty cool to talk to him. He said his dad had a silver 35th anniversary package GT like this when he was growing up so that inspired him to get this one. Unfortunately his dad's silver one got wrecked in an intersection and it twisted the frame so they parted it or sold it or you know let the insurance take it this one actually has um the it, the color is performance red which i love and it has a torch red hood on it for some reason and so you can see it has a non 35th anniversary hood scoop and stuff but the seats are still there the gauge bezel is still there the shifter balls there and stuff. So it's kind of cool that all the pieces are there, side scoop, side skirt, spoiler, honeycomb deck lid panel, all those specific 35th anniversary things, the door uh, panels there. So I had to leave. My wife's family was in town and we were all meeting up to go out to eat. And I like to sit by the window here, very busy road. This red GT500 kept going by. So it was definitely worth sitting there and getting to see the cool cars in town cruising around. It makes you want to go out and drive your own. And right across the street, there's another hamburger restaurant. And I went there later with my cousin with his Mach 1. You might have seen that in the story. So we took the Mach 1s out for a cruise and hung out and had a great time. He's just got this Mach 1 back. You can see the temporary tags on the plate and stuff. It has a new engine in it. 38,000 mile bottom end out of an automatic Mach 1. So it now has a six bolt crank and a new clutch, which doesn't really matter. But both these Mach 1s were late build and they had the DB heads on them. So that was actually pretty cool. That's something that I had noticed on that car a long time ago. So mine was built in July, right before the 2004 year. So his probably was too. Mustangs here. Huh? So if you watch, we've actually been doing a lot of work to this Mach 1, doing the rear pinion seal and the exhaust and stuff. Out. Oh, that's right. Now notice the nice Milwaukee headlamp Justin's wearing. Yeah, who, did you get that for him? Yeah, and notice the nice DeWall impact. I already did that for him too. I already did <laughs> that. Is video. that you? Yeah. That was Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. There you go. We gotta, we gotta get a picture of all of us. Uh, that's, that's a moment. No, you don't. Are you having gonna, a picture of all of us before we leave? <laughs> yeah. A memorable moment? Yeah. Oh! Yeah! 
Kenny Johnson. My wife and I took the GTs to an event, so we just cruised together. So it's so cool to see these two parked next to each other, kind of like a his and hers type of thing. I love driving any of these GTs around. And uh, she likes driving the silver one because it's automatic. The yellow one's a five-speed. And so fun to see them parked there together. And she had to go to something else later, so she went her way. And then the family and I went the other way, and we stopped at my grandma's house. Then just chilling at home with some ice cream, enjoying the view in the driveway. Just love doing this. It really is a good pastime. Then me just daily driving the GT, running errands. I take it to work and places and stuff. And then uh, out here with the yellow GT. So I'm just gonna go a few blocks away. Help my grandma for a minute. But the cool thing is I could walk there. It would probably take me five minutes or more. But the GT can take me there. And I just love that this car was immobile. And I'm always talking about how it was parted out and ruined. But now I get to use it and it can carry me somewhere. And it can do me a very nice service for the day. So I just love that about this. Sometimes when you walk places, you realize how much a car does for you. I dropped off my True Blue 03 GT that I had with the car the supercharger came off of. And uh, I dropped it off at the exhaust shop to get the exhaust welded because the previous owner had chopped it off at the headers. To do a clutch and, and it was then that I, I had like an hour to wait for them to do the job and I walked around town I walked to go get a hamburger and I had to go on crosswalks and wait for traffic and I saw everyone walking or everyone else was driving in their cars quickly back and forth and I thought man that's really a, a luxury to have a car and I realized how long it took me just to get to a little place nearby to go get something to eat. So, something that I've thought about a lot. But yeah, here we are. It would have taken me a little while to get here, but you know, it's nice to have a car to drive. Ended up replacing a smoke alarm for her and then got home just to see my wife drive off in the GT.
Now that's what I call relaxing. So I posted this picture because somebody was talking about how much they hated Zinc Yellow. And I showed this picture and said, you know, I think Zinc Yellow gets a bad rap because this is an old picture of a Zinc Yellow car. And the bottom one is my Zinc Yellow with a newer camera. So I think because of that, it really shows how Zinc Yellow is not as bad as the colors everyone thinks it was. was a friend of mine's black 99 Cobra. So I took the yellow GT and went to the cars and coffee meet on Saturday morning and that was really fun. So we're going to look around at some of the cars here. This is a beautiful Boss 302 and it's a really good looking car, really clean. And I think I've seen this car in a garage in a certain part of town. I'm pretty sure it's the same car, it has the white roof and everything. So it's pretty um, it's most likely that it's the same car and it had a bunch of, uh, stickers on it and stuff. So that's kind of cool to see a nice car. And these are getting older and more rare and you really just don't see very many of these. There was a guy here in town who had a grabber blue 2013, I believe. And, uh, I haven't seen that car for a while either. So there's the white roof and white stripe. And then here comes my friend's GT 350. We're going to talk a lot about this car right here. Here's a new dark horse, and you can see this one has the color shifting paint, and I actually noticed it has the graphics on the hood. I don't know if I remembered that. It actually says Mustang Dark Horse right there, but we'll look at it here for a second. You can see it looks like it's kind of the blue color, but then there you can see the color change, and I don't know if this is the one that's supposed to be like the Mystachrome kind of color one, so if you know that, put it in the comments, but it does have some kind of shifting paint on it, so... Here's a Firebird. I think this was a V6, but still cool to see the F-body cars. That's, you know, my generation, just like the Mustangs I have, so I respect those. There's a Hellcat, and here's a new Mach 1, beautiful-looking car. Uh, fighter Jet Gray, I believe, just like the MG channel, my buddy, on YouTube. And so if you've seen his Mach 1, it's the same kind of car here. Might even be option the same. He'll have to chime in and say if he knows and a uh, good looking car it's fun to see these they are very 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 similar to a gt350 same intake manifold same suspension stuff like that of course my gt looking fresh next to a 57 chevy and so i love my gt i'm very proud of it very happy to have it here and then uh, getting ready for my cousin to show up here with his mach one he got a little video of me talking, so I'll put that little clip in right here. You saw it in the show. <laughs> Justin SVT and it's a Shelby GT350. No, 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 it was a sponsored car. There's two of us that drove the car. Yeah, I was. So I talked with my friend who owns this Grabber Lime 2020 GT350 and we get along really well and we love talking and having a great time together and he was telling me about the issue he had where a lot of 2020s had a recall on the GT350s and I think even the GT500s that the secondary timing chain tensioner was installed in correctly or not up to spec or something, but it was loose and it could cause the car to skip timing and mess up the engine. And it was a recall that he had to do. And he took it into the Ford dealer and they checked it out and said it was fine. But then when he got home, he was looking over it and he thought, you know, I've after reading, he felt like it was really easy. You can take off the oil cap and really get to it easily. You can put his finger on it and feel that the secondary chain was really loose there's a lot of slack in it and stuff 
And so we talked about that issue and he told me the story of how it all happened. And I was actually looking on the GT350 forums and I came across his exact story where he had written out the whole thing. And I thought it would be kind of fun if I just go over what he said in his own words, because this is a pretty cool story. And it's an example of what happens when I go to cars and coffee and hang out at car shows and talk with people and you get kind of these awesome conversations. And so I just wanted to share what he had written down about the experience. And so he said, I received the notice from Ford late May, early June. I did notice the engine being quite loud since we got the car, but just assumed that that's the way they are. My Fiesta, Tacoma, Subarus, and other cars have all made the same noises, so I didn't really worry much about it. Plus, the famous typewriter tick of the Coyote engine made me think it was just the way they are. My only days off during the week are Fridays. It took three weeks before my local dealer was able to do the inspection on a Friday. I didn't dare drive the car once I found out about the issue. And what I had actually heard, a little side note, is that a lot of Ford dealerships told people do not even drive it. Just get it towed on a flatbed straight to the dealership and have it looked at because this is pretty serious. So he said it was about a month before he could get to it. He continued saying, I should have requested a tech come to my house to do the inspection, as was rumored to be an option. Well, I carefully drove to the dealer for the inspection. When I get there, they tell me they need it for a few days. So it may stay over the weekend and then some. I had a conversation with the service writer to see if it could be parked inside, but they said they don't have the room. It would be parked inside a gated area, though. I explained I was not so concerned with it being secured behind a gate as much as being parked in the elements. It is summer in the desert, so the brutal sun, not to mention random rain and windstorms that roll through. And let me just pause and say that I know this car only has 3,000 miles on it now, so this is a very low mileage, beautiful car that he's trying to preserve and take care of. And I myself wouldn't want any of my cars that I keep very nice to be out in the elements like that. Said, um, it was it was what it was, so I left the car. To my surprise, they call a few hours later and tell me the car passed inspection. I excitedly go to pick up the car and have fun driving it home, happy as can be. I decided to look over the document I found online and what the texts look at and the steps they follow if attention or failure is found. Finding out how easy it is, coupled with pictures other owners had posted on this and other forums, I decided to take a peek just for fun. And so here you can see how people can get a tool in there and they can look maybe mirror or something and they can see if the tensioner is activated or not activated. And so there's a little diagram where it shows what the tensioner should look like. And you can also see here that it actually shows that it affected GT 350s and 500s built between December 2nd, 2019 to December 16th, 2020. So his car was in that range. He continues to say, I decided to take a peek and I discovered the tensioner appeared to be faulty and I could not get it to show good or having tension no matter what step I took. Trust me, I tried everything the document stated. I also touched the chain with my fingers and there was little to no tension on the chain. I was upset. It was now Friday evening, so I would have to wait until Monday morning to even talk to anyone. Monday rolls around after being mad all weekend and I spoke to the service manager. We have developed a good relationship. He helped me a ton with the airbag light issue on my 06 Mustang. He is a good dude. He was concerned and told me to bring the car back in ASAP. He wanted his lead mechanic to look at it to just be sure. I take a morning off work and I bring the car in. The lead mechanic and manager meet me. The manager is cool with me as usual, but the lead mechanic is throwing shade my way. I understand they probably get a lot of people coming into their dealership who think or act like they know what they are talking about, but don't. Another mechanic shows up and was like saying, hey, isn't that the green GT350? So-and-so checked in last Friday. I responded, yes. Then when he asks why it's back, I told him it was not good to go, like they had said. They take one peek and say, yeah, this isn't right. 
The lead mechanic jokingly told me it would have been easier if I just blew the thing up because they don't like to work on these expensive motors. Now, I find that kind of funny because the Coyote engine is basically the same platform. There isn't really any difference. Any four-valve engine would be about the same to work on, so I don't understand why that would be such a big deal. Anyway, he continues to say, the, the mechanic says, I don't want to deal with that. The car was running fine, but man, was I nervous driving it there. I knew the Voodoo engine was expensive, but I had no idea they were over $20,000. The manager explained that there is only one guy he will allow to tear into a Voodoo, and he is a couple weeks backed up with other pro projects and jobs. Plus, they will have to chat with Ford about why the car that was checked off of his passing is not being okay. I kind of felt bad for the wrath of the mechanic that checked it off was about to receive, but come on, man, a few weeks, several phone calls later, and my car is back at the dealer. Now, I think that is totally acceptable to take your car back in. I don't care what the issue is. You're the customer. You bought the car brand new, especially in this case. It's under warranty. If you think something's not right, then it's not right. You should be able to go in there and verify it and have it double checked. So he continues to say, we are now in mid-July. I often drive by the dealer for work and saw the car sitting outside for a week, parked somewhat by the for sale cars, not by the service vehicles. A phone call reveals they parked it there so it would be by itself away from movement less likely for an incident. Makes sense, and they are waiting on parts to show up. Another week goes by and the car is inside being worked on. The following week, I'm leaving out of state for vacation, so I asked for an ETA on the car on a Friday. They said that it was a seal that didn't show up with the rest of the parts, and they are waiting for it. The weekend passes, then Monday, then Tuesday, nothing. I call and they say they are waiting to overnight a seal because they ordered one and didn't show up. Our car will be done on Thursday. Well, I'm leaving on Wednesday after work. Thankfully, my brother and sister-in-law are car people and I trust them, so they go pick up the GT350 when it was done. They report the car made it home safely and was running perfect, but was very dirty from being outside as several rainstorms had passed. For those who don't know, desert rainstorms are often more brutal as a lot of sand and dust is blown around before and after. So you not only have to deal with water spots, you also have to deal with caked on sand and dirt. Not fun. Then immediately after it turns into baking in the sun. After I got home from vacation, I'm so stoked to drive the car, so after a good detail, I check everything over. All looks good, and I go for a drive. The engine sounds tight and no noise that I had previously assumed was normal that I now realize was probably the chain slapping around in there. The car hadn't jumped timing, so only chain tensioner, guides, and related parts were fiddled with. Now, something I want to... Uh, talk about here for a second is as I read through the recall it did state that Ford had different steps of what they would look for and it even got into the point where they would take bore scopes look in the engine do leak down tests and if it didn't pass all those tests they would actually replace the pistons and rods and everything so pretty crazy of what could have happened here so he says on my way home from the drive boom check engine light our Ford pass app says it was a catalytic converter or something. I don't remember the code. I figured it's not related and the car isn't doing anything weird. The following Monday, I take some more time off work and bring the car in. I'm met by a different service advisor. The manager and the advisor that was helping me before were not there. The guy asks what's going on. I tell him he immediately snaps. They can't look at it for at least a week. I asked him to at least scan it and confirm the code is nothing major and clear the codes. We were able to come to an agreement to clear the code, and if it comes back, I will make an appointment. Well, the code came back the next time I drove it. I tried to make an appointment, but due to current restrictions here, half of the staff of the dealer is gone. They tell me over the phone, I'm guessing a call center, the closest appointment is in October. Yeah, no. I called the service advisor who helped with the chain tensioner issue, and he tells me to bring it right in. They will work on 
and, it, and put it right in the schedule. Another morning off, I bring the car back again. He calls later in the day, to my surprise, considering their staff issues, car had a bad catalytic converter, and they will have to have it fixed in a few days. I let him know how stoked I was about the quick turnaround. He called the GT350 a hot potato. They don't want that car hanging around, upping the chances of something happening to it, and he knows all the crap we have dealt with in the summer. They pushed it through. I've only been able to drive the car twice since, but the check engine light hasn't come back. I was told that the new cat cost $2,000. Thankfully, our cars sit low, and most live in a garage, so hopefully no thieves will be getting into it. During this whole thing, my wife called Ford Customer Service to let them know how displeased we were with the brand of the GT350 having to be at the dealership for repairs half the time they had owned it. And so they basically said that they'd bought the car in Arizona and the dealer in Arizona said they'd be happy to buy the car back, but at this point they're happy with the car and as long as everything's okay with it, then they want to keep it. Now something he did tell me that wasn't in this story was that when he had the car at the dealership, he had a dash cam in there and it even has sound on it and he watched when they moved the car around that one of the lot tech kids got in it and he was ripping it around the parking lot even to the point where somebody yelled at him you could hear him get yelled at through the window when the window was down and he was really upset about that i would be too you leave your car in the care of people and it gets trashed like that now i know you can't really blame the dealership all the time for what the employees do because employees are going to act certain ways no matter how you train them but that would make me very upset. And I had that happen too with my Mustang once when we went to get new tires on it and the guy, he drifted it around the parking lot to go put it into the bay to put new tires on it. But anyway, and while we were talking about it, an older gentleman came up with a Porsche jacket on and he owns a Porsche and he was there at the meet and he started talking to us. He said, I've been through two of these GT350s. And these are the kind of stories I love because I would never have known this and he's probably not posting this on forums or Facebooks or anywhere where it's going to be seen. This is just kind of a story that you hear in person at the car meet and it was pretty fun. And basically he told us that he had a 2016 GT350 and it only had like 900 miles on it and the engine just destroyed itself. And so he gave the car back to Ford, like Lemon Law, I think they took it and uh, they did the buyback on it. And then he bought another one in either 2019 or 2020. I want to say it was 2020. It was the Gen 2 engine. It was the the same thing. And he said that engine, after 3,000 miles, completely destroyed itself. And so I'm guessing that it probably had the same issue with the secondary tensioner coming loose and then bending valves and messing up the engine because he said it had like 3,000 miles on it. And he drove it spiritedly, but he was driving around and all of a sudden it just busted up and started making all sorts of noise and he said he took that car back to Ford and he gave it to him and tossed the key fobs at him and said this is your car you're buying this back this is the second one I've been through I'm not doing this again so um, uh, they were both white cars with blue stripes which I just wanted to know because I always think it's cool to know the story but uh, pretty interesting to know that there's a guy here in town who's had two GT350s and he's been through all this. There have been a handful of those in town, GT350s, and I like them and I've driven my friends a lot. And So anyway, it's cool to see this one here and talk and have a good time at the car show. And so while I was there, I saw the first dark horse that I had seen in person. And there are a lot of cars here and just like that GT350, each of these cars could have a story very similar. Here's a newer Mach 1. This one's always nice to look at. I believe the owner who had this had a 2018 or 19 bullet uh, before that. And then here's another S650 base model Coyote. I mean, it might be a track pack, but I mean, it's not the dark horse. And then there's the Celine that's there all the time. This car's supercharged. Nice looking car. The guy uh, who owns this does a lot of the photography for the events. Here's the picture of the GT350 that we've been talking about sitting here looking. And as we were there, this uh, dark horse had moved over and parked more nearby. You can see the Shelby and 
a couple down, so he had parked this is the same car. Uh, but another dark horse, and it's the color changing one as well. This Coyote is pretty cool. It's like an 18 to 23, and it has the Roush charger on it. It was a GT, but they added the Roush badges in the supercharger, so that's pretty cool. This is a Roush Stage 3, and I've talked to the owner of this car. He was really nice. And there's another Roush here that's a 429R, and I know this guy had bought this brand new, and we talked, and he has a 99 Cobra that you may have seen on the channel before. Another Mustang guy here has this beautiful fastback. It's a 66 or 65, I can't remember exactly, but it's a beautiful car. And then, of course, my GT, which I'm very proud of and happy to see it there. And yes, it's still a little bit of a project car, and it's not as nice as the other Mustangs I have, but I'm happy to bring it there and enjoy. There's, this is the Boss 302, and this has the Roadrunner engine. It's not a Coyote. It's a variant of the Coyote, but even the internals are different, so pretty cool. Then, of course, my cousin showed up with his red Mach 1, and he later pulled over and parked it by us. so windy you might not hear it but there we go there we go open the valves go get lunch together and go hang out. S197 Roush convertible over there. And we all went to a park for a soccer game. And we realized that we had a 2002, 2003, and 2004 Mustang here all lined up. <laughs> and they all had bullet wheels on them. That was kind of interesting. His Mach 1 has the bullet wheels on it because his Mach 1 wheels were swapped onto his bullet and then he lost his bullet and so the bullet wheels remained on his Mach 1. So pretty cool to see these all lined up here. Nice little lineup of new edge Mustangs and I'm sure whoever owned this house we were parked in front of was wondering why there was a Mustang show going on. <laughs> but it was fun and you know my wife needed to go other places with the GT and I was going to go up and uh, visit the other cars at the other garage and stuff and then my cousin was going to go somewhere else so we were all about to split up and go our separate ways. Go. 
<laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, I was just trying to do a startup video of the Silver GT, but then she wanted me to go first. parked underneath the awning next to the sonic blue gt parts car because it was going to rain and i love driving the yellow gt today it was perfect because it got rained on and stuff and i didn't want to have the mock one out this day because of all the places we were going and you know it was perfect to take the yellow gt to cars and coffee but sad to see the sonic blue one all wrecked and stuff but testing a printer would you expect anything else So you can see with all the rain and all the places we parked the car and all the tumbleweeds blowing around, I was happy to have the GTs out today. It was like perfect. I love these cars and I take just as good a care of them as I can, but when you have really beautiful Cobras and Mach 1s that are like show cars and garage queens, you don't want them out here in the elements and these cars live outside anyway, so it's just perfect to have these out and... I couldn't think of a car that I would have rather had to drive around for the day. And so when I go to these things, I always like to decide the day of which car I want to take. And today it was the GT for sure. So I love taking it out. It's tumbleweeds everywhere. But GT's looking good parked here on this little pedestal of a parking lot. So it's kind of fun to walk out and look at them and see them while we were eating. We went into this other store and then came out and I didn't worry about them while we were in the store like I would my other cars. So that's always awesome. I love the GTs for that reason. My wife driving off, windshield all filthy from the rainstorm. So we got home and my cousin called and said, hey, my exhaust got ripped apart on a speed bump. I need you to fix it. So he brought it over. It looks like the four nuts on the exhaust mid pipe were not on there at all. So we fixed that. We'll have to get it up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Everything's just off. It didn't strip anything off? No. They all just came off? That's yeah, weird. Yeah, they just freaking came off. Yeah, wait, okay, flange here. Flange back there. Okay. Let's see what we got here. The center right now, I gotta just draw. Yeah. They matter the most. The right. little things end up being the big things. Yeah, that's what you gotta remember. Dirty. Yeah. You don't have to wash it, man. Me too. You don't have to wash it. Mine got all rained on today. All right. That's okay. Okay. Love ya. Love you too. We'll see you later. I mean, next weekend. Yeah, we'll hang out. We'll... Or, or maybe before that. Clay barn wax.
I drove the GT to work real early and that rainstorm really destroyed the windshield. My gosh, the car is so filthy. I couldn't stand driving it. I had to stop at a gas station and clean the windshield. This is kind of a cool gas station. It's brand new here. So first time I've ever been here and it's on the way to work. So that's perfect. My wife took the GT and went where she needed to go, and that left me with some time to work on the cars a little bit. The Zinc Yellow GT was actually having an issue with the A-pillar. I had not completely bolted this down, and uh, it was flapping like this when I was driving in that rainstorm with just, that we just saw, you know. And uh, so I basically had one bolt in here, and I just had to take it all apart, take the weather stripping out and work on it. Because there was another V6 that was zinc yellow that I considered buying. And I was going to swap all these parts over because these had been repainted. And it was off a zinc yellow car, but um, not original. So that's why I was holding out on it. But this did have a broken stud. I'd gotten the C pillar off of, or A pillar off of a uh, V6 in the junkyard. And so... Um, that's the whole reason behind this. And so I got that stud out and I had some hardware I'd saved from the wrecking yard and got this all torn apart. And, uh, you know, it's not fun taking this out all out because sometimes it doesn't want to go back in very easily, but I cleaned it up here and, uh, I even got, uh, this surface area ready for some double-sided tape that I can put in there, some 3M stuff here. So, and this is what even holds on some like Roush side scoops and stuff, so it's pretty strong. So I got that in there and helped and then ran the screw bolt things through it. So um, I used this little cutoff piece of a uh, electrical connector as a washer to, because the screw I had was a little bit small. I bolted everything in and used the one of the original Torx ones for it, but got that all back together, and now we don't have to hold it with our hand as we go down the road because it's not going to be flapping around anymore. And we went somewhere. Look at all these tumbleweeds underneath the car. Like I was saying, the GTs were perfect to be driving around in the windy and rainy weather lately. So we took the GTs and went to a school choir event for our family, and... I got there first with the zinc yellow GT, got a front row spot, and hung out, and then it was just really cool to see it there. I love looking out at it, that bright yellow. It's the first thing that catches your eye when you go out the door, and you cannot help yourself. You will notice the yellow car for sure. So it looked good sitting there, and my wife was running a little bit late from her meetings, but here she comes. You can see the silver GT there, and... Uh, it's always fun to watch it drive up, and I enjoy watching it. So I came up to this upper room here where I could see her come in and record her driving the GT and see it coming into the parking lot. So I thought that was really fun. So here comes the GT. It looked really good. It was like shining in the sun very nicely and just a beautiful car. And there it goes over the speed bump <laughs> and stuff. So fun to watch it driving. So here it comes into the high school parking lot and this isn't very far from the house but we needed to take two cars because she was already at like a work thing and then she um, came for the event and then she was going somewhere else after so while well, she goes somewhere after you'll see we go out when the gt and have some fun too but here it is parking and of course we couldn't park together because of how late she was and how early I was there, but she doesn't even care anyway if we park next to each other, but I do. But anyway, walking back out to the car at night, and that's another reason all these people walking past the car, maybe bumping it and stuff. 
So after the concert, I took the family out to dinner. We went to the place we like to go and just fun to go here and see the GT parked out there. It looks so good. It looked really good in the night light, you know, the zinc yellow. I really like this car. It's bright and fun and it just looks good sitting there. I love the bullet wheels on it. And we had gone to the store, got some treats, and then I went home and realized I was overcharged for something, and it was a frozen item, so I had to go take it back, and I couldn't just wait. And so I took the GT again, thought, well, I'll take the GT for a drive, doesn't hurt to drive it back to the store. You know, just love having a runaround errand car like this that I enjoy driving and definitely getting my use out of it. So the silver GT needed a wash. I washed the yellow one, but then I realized that the silver one was filthy because my wife had it while I was washing the yellow one. So I came out here and just cleaned it off. That dirty rain, you know, you get the desert dust blowing all over and then it rains on it and then gets it wet and then it blows more dust all over it. It's just really dirty, but anyway. Nice to get all cleaned up. So that's the update for now. Just enjoying the cars, loving driving them around, having them for their different uses and stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more Mustang updates.